Alright, what's up? Welcome to the Anton and One podcast, brain-tickling conversations for the ambitious and anxious young Filipino. My name is Anton Fausto and I want to welcome you not just to a new episode, but to a new background. This is my new room. So we just moved uh, recently and that's why daming kaguluhan, a lot of stuff has been happening up in my life. But let's just take some time. Please, look at my... If you are listening to this, you are missing out. Um... Look at my shelves, man. Look at that matte black finish. Uh, quick story before we get into the podcast. If you have been watching my past episodes, you you know that there's that bright red wall that I've had in my background. Um, the thing the thing is that room isn't uh, wasn't initially going to be a bedroom. It was a playroom, then turned into a guest room, then menjo inangkin ko as my room. The thing is with a red wall like that, that isn't the vibe you want for a bedroom. Eh? Kaya. Um, I've been having a, I, I, I had the challenge relaxing and resting and sleeping in that bedroom because it's bright red. Even if it's just a color, um, sleeping there every day for like two years, let me tell you that it, it's pretty tough. Like there's an effect of that red. That's why I, I made sure I wanted something more relaxed and black and cool, diba? Cool kasi kung naka black ka eh. So yeah, when I've been Netflixing at night, mas masarap na. As in, mas relax na ako, honestly. Alright, so anyway, I hope you guys are doing good. It is already November. It's magapit na, not just in Christmas, magapit na in birthday ko. Um, but before all the festivities, before all the joy, this episode's a little serious again. Uh, I know my past episode, my recent episode with a martial law detainee, my guest was detained back in 1972, and his, his name is gonna remain concealed as well as his face. That's why it was just an audio version. Um, this episode is going to be sort of like a reflection on that and um, some lessons I picked up and I guess advice that I'd want to share to other content creators, especially those who who post stuff online because I went through a challenging couple of weeks in terms of being in that online space, feeling safe in it and and feeling attacked with all the the different comments because of the obviously the controversial topic that I uh, that I discussed. So if you haven't watched that yet or listened to it rather, I suggest you do. It's it's you can find it also here in my in my channel in my show. But just like Modern Family, I always like to say this: you can still watch this and enjoy this. I'm sure you're still gonna learn a lot. You don't need to listen to the entire episode to understand this one. But just like Modern Family, if you watch the past episodes, you'll get to appreciate the 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 next ones a little more. <sighs> okay, so. To start off, this reflection I have with that with that episode um, with the martial law detainee, just to share again, uh, I I initially thought of doing that because we know that the the anniversary happened, and we see the news about the son Ferdinand Marcos Jr. running for president, and that that kind of scared me. Now that I'm 24 years old, I, I feel the effects more of what happens, what the government does. Like when you when you were when you were studying, especially me, the privileged, you know, all boys school at the parang no matter who the president was, naman, I'm gonna eat the same, I'm gonna do the same stuff. But as you get older and you start earning your own money and you start you start being aware more of what happens in the world or in your in your country specifically, you have no choice but to be more aware of what's happening in politics. And this is what's happening in politics. So the son of the late dictator, Ferdinand Marcos, is now running for president. I don't want to go out and bash him or bash those supporters. I'm not here to say, hey, he is wrong, he is bad. That's that's not what I'm doing. And that's not the you know, that's not the point of why I'm doing this. Why I had that episode last last week was because I just wanted to talk about what happened. I'm not an educator. I'm not, I'm not a professor. I'm not a lecturer or anything like that. I'm a, I'm a storyteller. I love. I'm a conversationalist. I love talking. Like that. That's what I do here in the podcast. I keep on talking with other people from different backgrounds with different opinions, and that's why I got someone who, who who experienced it firsthand. My parents were able to experience martial law firsthand, but they were teenagers. It, it's very different if it's someone who was actually detained himself. That's why it. I wouldn't say I'm that shocked, but when I uploaded my first clip on TikTok, which was which was just announcing, it was just announcing that my next guest 
is a was detained back in martial law. Dude, the comments were wild. Like that is probably my most one of my most watched um TikTok videos and definitely the most uh, no, commented one on. Like there are hundreds and hundreds of comments. And the thing is that I am not I don't think that a lot of them are human. Like I'm pretty sure a lot of them are bots and a lot of them are trolls. But even if I had it in the back of my head and I wasn't and I was expecting this, I was like, okay, you're gonna talk about martial law, you're gonna talk about something controversial. Expect the backlash. Expect to you know feel the wrath. Feel the wrath, feel the hate. And and I did, and I did. And this is already coming from someone who I'm aware of what's gonna happen. I was sure of what I said. I did it in the safest. Like I didn't say, hey, this happened, this is wrong, Ganyan. I literally just got someone on who talked about his personal experiences and I reacted along the way. But damn, the comments, man. Dude, I'm human too. I, I didn't go on TikTok for a while just because but ugit ugit yung comments. Eh. And I noticed that there is a pattern. There is a pattern to those type of comments that they either bring up something else, try to I just talked about how my next guest is a martial law detainee. It's all, hey, why don't you talk about this one? Why don't you talk about that issue? Ganyan, ganyan. Why don't you interview Juan Ponce Enrique? Why don't you interview Ramos? Like, yo, if you guys have the contact, let me know, man. Just hit me up. I would love to converse with those people. But that wasn't the point, man. It was just, hey, this is my next episode. You guys should check it out. And I am sure that a majority, no, you know, no, for sure 90%, because that clip, has like at this point probably like sixty thousand views. I would love to have six thousand views on my episode, but no, I didn't. I have I had a couple of hundred, which is it was. I am happy with the with the turnout. Like I did did get did get views and um people listen and all that stuff. But it's not like they listened to it. They just went there. A lot of people just went there to my clip. Oh, saw that we were talking about. Saw that this guy, this random dude, is talking about who can't roll his R's. I know this guy who who's talking about martial law. Let's go throw him this other stuff. Calling me Dilawan, telling me Magahong Alam. Um, there are a few, I would say there are a few, like one out of well, 50 comments. So, random guy who's gonna say, Pogi mo sir, hashtag let Lenny read. Again, that, that also doesn't really have anything to do with the clip. But at the same time, it was it was pretty nice to have those, to have those comments as well. So, you know, to the people who who commented to the commenters, like who answered them, who who gave them statements, who gave them um, links, research, and facts. I want to thank you guys because you are the ones that I'm trying to reach, man. Like I know that there are gonna be a lot of trolls who saw my content, whether they're human or whether it's the like one troll could have like a hundred accounts, those type of stuff. I mean, I'm happy that I got to reach some people. And I'm happy. I had this one comment that that really that probably one of my favorite comments. I forgot the name. She told me that she is a Bong Bong Marcus supporter, but she was still interested to listen to my episode and see like, you know what? Bahami magingang na nagawa ng na politician that I'm supporting. And that's the whole point, man. Like that's really yun talaga yung dahilan. That's why I want to do it. Um, I could talk to people who already. I could make that episode for people who already know that, hey, martial law is wrong. We shouldn't let this shit happen again. We should vote better, all those stuff. But those people already made up their mind. Like, if I just support them and say, you know, whatever you're thinking, keep doing that. That's not really going to make much change. But then to talk to those people, for to be listened to, not just to talk to them. Eh. It's one thing to talk to people, but to be listened by these people, by, by sorry, I'm not these people. I don't mean like you people. Um, but but to be able to to be listened to by people who have different opinions, different backgrounds, different preferences, and just to start that conversation, I honestly don't know if I was able to convert any supporter. If anybody watched, if if someone has been supporting, you know, Ferdinand Marcus Jr. up to and watches my one episode, I doubt that one episode and that one conversation is gonna be like, you know what? I probably shouldn't vote for this guy. I probably I probably rethink my my civic. My civil duty of voting for the future of the country, right? But to just start to just start that conversation, that that is, I guess that that's enough for me. Like it's worth it. All the the hassle of, I don't know these people who were commenting, but it it, it does hurt, champ. Right? It doesn't it doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel nice. Um. So congratulations if that was your goal, Eddie. Yeah, you hurt my feelings. Okay, 
Congrats. Um, but anyway, I wanted to talk about some lessons I picked up. So, so that was my experience with like, with, with like the trolls and the bashing and all those stuff. Um, but it was worth it because I did, having that conversation really gave me a lot of lessons. And I have four main lessons to, uh, that I want to share with you guys. The first lesson I, I, I picked up is to be kind to everyone. This is, it's very basic. It's very preschool. I, I remember hearing somewhere that everything you need to learn in life, you learn it in kindergarten. And it, it's kind of true, the right? Be nice to people. Don't hurt people. Treat them the way you want to be treated. Don't steal. If you get something, put it back where you, where you found it. Like that basic stuff. But being kind to everyone is, it's, it's, um, it's so mainstream. Like people keep saying this thing. No, you gotta be kind to everyone. But I believe it's, I believe it's an underrated lesson. I believe it's an underrated um, way of living because, yo, the, the if you have if you if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you don't want to listen to the whole episode. I have a clip about the lady who sold bananas, and how that helped potentially sort of save the life or made the life of the of my guest so much easier and so much better in the time of his detainment. Like you don't know because one act of kindness could could circle around and come back to you. And even if, like when it, when it comes, and, and what I think about these kind acts or being kind or doing the right thing, <clears throat> you can always go back to the intention. <laughs> like when you talk about the Catholic teachings, oh, you got to do good because Jesus wants you to do good. And if you do good, you're going to go to heaven. If your only reason of doing kind things is because you want to go to heaven, diba? Right? Let's say you're a very selfish person. Let's say you don't, let's say you hate your family, but you always, you know, but when they ask you to do stuff, you do it. When you give them gifts, you treat them well, you treat them with respect, even if you hate them. But your only reason is because, Haga, I want to go to heaven. I got to act kind. For me, that's fine. Compared to, I'm going to be honest to myself and just be an asshole because I hate these people, so I'm going to treat them with hate. Like, walang panaga dun. yung tago. If you act kind, even if you're in, this is where, this is where I believe that this is one of those rare times that you know what the intention probably isn't that important. Like if if you if you have the choice, you meet someone, you see someone randomly because we can kind of see people now because you can go out again ish, but let's still wear our masks, please. Um, if you see someone randomly and you give them a high, a nice high hello, even if you don't care about that person or whatever, like just just that act is powerful enough to you know, have some effects to other people. That person could, you know, it could help his day and he, he becomes kind to another person and it, you know, goes on and on. Like just being kind to everybody, treating people with respect, that is an underrated yet super, super crucial life skill that everybody, I believe, has to have. <sighs> second law, I second law, <laughs> second lesson I got is that things that seem normal can still be wrong. The story of him, of my guest, when he was in the parking lot and they were asked to squat and they were kicked and they were, you know, that was like the, the, the start of their, of their torturing experience. People were going about as if, you know, business as usual. It's another day in the office. People were coming, going in and out. This was in UP. They, they're doing their business, all those stuff. Like they just see what's happening. So let it be. Th- this makes me, th- this, this shows a sad reality that, when you talk about things that are right and wrong, it's so subjective and the the gray area is so like I don't think there's a black and white when it comes to things that are right and wrong. Eh? It's more of just what are your principles, what are your values, and are you willing to stand up for them? Because if you see someone getting kicked, I don't unless you're watching a, you know, a, a martial arts thing. Like I that I don't think I can't imagine another scenario where you see somebody physically hurting another person and thinking that's okay. But if everybody around you seems to be fine with it, for some reason, it's human nature though, that we end up feeling like, ah, everybody's kind of okay with it, so I guess it's fine. It's like, it's like jaywalking in a road where everybody jaywalks. Man. There are some dumbasses who cross at Commonwealth and they, they just jaywalk that thing, but then... Um, other other streets and roads like you don't have to go on the pedestrian because well, yeah, parang that's what everybody does it doesn't make it doesn't make it correct diba? so I think it's a good reminder to be aware that that exists that that possibility that reality of things seeming normal just because everybody's okay with it but it's so wrong pala. that's true and I have probably 
you know, overlooked some stuff or, you know, turned the blind eye. Is that the term? Turn the blind eye. Turn the other cheek. Or basa hindi ko pinansin kasi parang everybody's okay with it naman eh. Like, just be aware of that first because if you're not aware that that problem exists, there's no way you're gonna solve it or fix it. And this relates to my third lesson. There is no one enemy, okay? There is no one villain of the story. It's a matter of principles. It's a matter of your values. Like, I used to think that, yo, martial law, the dictator, siya yung, siya yung, ano, siya yung villain, siya yung masama. He's the one that should be taken down, all those stuff. But in, again, in the experience of my guest, when he went to, when he was detained, the other Filipinos, the other detainees there kind of turn on each other because they feel like you're the reason why we're here. And they're also thinking like, you're the reason why we're here in jail. So parang they're blaming each other. Like it, it, become, it became a you against me more than like an us against the system, diba? Th- that type of thing. Like it's not... It's not as clear. It's not as easy as, as I thought, man. It's not like the movies. It's not like, you know what? The Avengers, like Thanos. I Dude, that guy's the bad guy. Thanos is the bad guy of the movie. That's so clear. But at the same time, if you can even dissect Thanos, in the, first, in, in the first Avengers, not the first Avengers movie, the first Avengers movie where he showed up, which was Infinity War. I think it was Avengers Infinity War and then Avengers Endgame. Please don't cancel me, Marvel fans, if I got it wrong. The first movie, the first movie where Thanos appeared, I honestly was kind of like, you know what? This guy could have a point. Like, he is doing it to save the universe because the bad, the, the overconsumption, overpopulation, ganyan. I just don't agree with the methods, but at the same time, like, his value of, like, I'm doing this to save people, it's the right thing. I'm like, okay, you're a villain, but at the same time, ooh, that's a good villain. That's a good, those are good writers who thought of your thing. But, I think it became easier in the sec- in the next Avengers movie where he was like, I'm just gonna fucking kill everybody. Like he he just wanted to kill people. So I was like, Yep, okay. They made it clear again that this dude is the bad guy. Cause it me parang ano, eh, parang medyo mi ano si Thanos sa earlier movie na parang, you know what? Baka may point siya eh. Pero they made it easier and clear to understand the next the next movie that no, I'm just bad. I just wanna kill people. So the same way in the real world. It's not just about like, oh, this guy is wrong. He did this wrong thing. Well, God, that's the enemy. Like, it's, it's, there are people who you totally disagree with and don't like. Like, we see a lot of, here we go. We see a lot of politicians, I'm not gonna name, who've kind of like changed sides. We see some, like, I see a lot of, wow, look at this story. Like, look at the character development of this. What is this? Zuko from Avatar? In Tibong, hey, this person was kind of, this person was against, this, this, this person was against like human rights and stuff. Now he's for it. The same way we have figures who were, you know, advocates of human rights who were against the tyranny and against violence, but now they're kind of the face of violence and tyranny. But so, so again, th- there's no enemy. We don't have. It's not. It's not kakampe in enemies. It's a matter of your principles and your values. What What do you stand for? What What do you believe about? What What are you willing to fight for? And it's a sad reality because if we, when I just look at that one episode I had and the, the comments were either super thumbs up or super su- thumbs down. Super, 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 super. The comments about, it's either, yes, that's so good, Anton. Thank you for making this episode. We should talk about this, all that shit. We have that one end of the spectrum. But, and then we have the other side. Like, I, there weren't that many people in between, although there, there are some random, ooh, foggy mo, sir, kuya Anton. There are some, like, I don't know where to put that on the spectrum. But that that's what's happened. And I, I remember watching this movie, shoot, this is movie on Netflix about social media and how it's like fucking everything up. But anyway, what, what it talk about in, in social media is that because of social media, like, everyone, everyone has become more polarized. Like, you are fed in your newsfeed, you are fed information that will agree with what you really believe in. And it goes the same with people you don't agree with. So if I believe that the earth is round and then I keep I keep you know I keep consuming content about earth is round, ganyan, there could be another person on the other side of the world who believes that the earth is flat and keeps researching about it. So the newsfeed and the AI, the algorithm, she's gonna keep feeding him information about how the earth is flat, the earth is flat. So Sobrang that guy really believes that the earth is flat. Well, I really believe the earth is round. So, mas lalo kami naging, mas lalo na divide yung, yung beliefs namin. Mas, mas lalo na divide yung tao. That's why, that's why it's really, there's really like a, when they say the next war isn't gonna be like 
war war it's gonna be like you know internet and cyber and shit like i believe that stuff because that's kind of what's happening like if you disagree with someone it's so hagata on the internet so yeah there's no one enemy it's about your values and principles and this next one this next the fourth lesson i learned it's you can apply it with all with every bad thing you've gone through with with your trauma with your mistakes with embarrassing moments is that you should learn to laugh at your own past like learn to laugh at it because me personally i'm a person who loves comedy and humor i think that the if you were able to do to go through that experience and process it and then you can laugh at it i think that's a sign that you've moved on i think that's healthy Although I do acknowledge that there are people, and I do this all sometimes, that if there's something you don't really want to deal with, it feels awkward, a laugh at it na lang. Those are two different ones. It's different if you laugh at something to parang dismiss it and to not deal with it. And there's another, there's another one where you can laugh at it because you've gone through it already. Because my guest was laughing along the way. Like he, he mentioned it somewhere in the ending that you looked more depressed than I am. Because I was still going through his experience, which he's already gone through decades and decades ago. Like, yes, that dude was detained. Yes, he was beaten up. Yes, he was tortured. And he was kind of laughing about it. He's laughing about how, like, yeah, I actually met Bong Bong Marcos. We had a drink. And I even thought, you know what? What if I told this guy that this his father turned my life upside down. He was laughing along the way. Like, yo, I can't imagine what it's like to, to see the people responsible for so much of your suffering and you just kind of laugh it off. Like, at one side, it, a part of me thinks like, yo, good for this guy, he's moved on. But the, at the same time, another, another part of me feels kind of sad because it's like, kind of helpless. It's like, well, we, have, we can't do anything about it but laugh. So, with all these experiences that we have in life, all our experiences are our experiences. Whatever trauma you've gone through, whatever suffering you have gone through, it is like 100% uniquely your experience. People can tell you how you can deal with it, how you should deal with it. But if you are able to laugh at it, at least if that was a genuine laugh, if that was a laugh that, was, that felt nice, it was you know, a relaxing laugh, it'd be good for you. Like If you could laugh at it, that's great. So those are the four lessons I four lessons I picked up from that episode, which culminate in this one final lesson. So five pagani lessons go. And it's my shout out and my my call, my cry for help to everybody in my generation. Okay, everybody in this generation, whether you're millennial, zillennial, Gen Z, boomer, but you feel like you're a millennial. You know, anybody who is alive right now, it's our generation's turn. No matter how mm, it's uncomfortable to talk about, it's kind of it's kind of awkward. I didn't really I didn't think that this would happen. I thought that the martial law story ended when martial law ended. And to quote from hundreds of the comments and bashers and trolls that have com- that have um, replied to my TikToks, martial law na naman, but hanggang ngayon, di pa ba kayo move on? Kasi gago, di pa nga tayo move on. Because it's still here. Like, we still feel the fucking effects on the economy, on how bad the situation is in our country. Like, you think, like, you th- do you think a country becomes poor overnight? Do you think that the GDP is so bad, the inflation gets fucked up, that the peso dollar exchange, like, do you think that shit happens overnight? And just because you oust the leader who caused that shit and that downfall, that's not gonna fix it, man. That's gonna take a long time. Like, a huge hundreds of billions of dollars being stolen. Like, you think we're just gonna get the budget again? Like, you don't, you don't refresh. You don't get to hit refresh when it comes to your money. The country's money, rather. If you're out here buying buildings in New York, if you're out here getting animals from Africa, man, those, Africa's, those animals are pretty dope, but I, I'm kind of scared to check out Kagawit, Kagawit, Kagawit Island. The island where the, where the animals are. I, I bet, I don't know. I imagine some Ben 10 shit happening there. But anyway... All those huge mistakes and and wrongdoings against our country, tana decades na until now, malabang we're still gonna feel it because that's how bad things were. So even if I don't wanna talk about Marsha Go anymore, I don't wanna face this shit. That's there. Eh? We have no choice. We have a choice. You can choose to not deal with it, but then if you don't deal with it, that shit's just gonna keep on happening. 
Like, it does make me question, do I just want to leave this country? Do I want to live somewhere else and deal with another nation's problems? Because the problems in my country, we're still facing them decades after. We're still here. And I do agree with you, trolls. Martial law, hindi pa tayo nakamove on. Yes, hindi pa tayo nakamove on. Nakakainis. Help. Let's help each other. You want, you want, besides, instead of just talking about it and bringing up, oh, why don't you talk about this massacre and, you know, those type of stuff. Like, it's still here. <sighs> To quote, um, to talk about, to, to, to bring up an episode I had before with, with Jim Paredes from Apple Hiking Society, that it was his time when he was my age. He was dealing with this martial law shit. He was the one, he was one of the people who would write songs about it. He'd inspire people, he'd go to these rallies. He was, you know, a face of the revolution and, 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 the, and the change and everything. I thought that was okay. Yo, Apple, Apple Hiking Society did it. Why do we have to do it? But we do. It's still here. It's still here. So yeah, that was be, that would be like the main, the culminating shit about that 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 martial episode, the episode I had with Jim Paredes is that it's our generation's turn. It's your turn, listener. I do I do market this show to people in their quarter facing their quarter life crisis in their twenties, like my age. But that doesn't just mean it's just us in the twenties. No matter what age you are, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, and you're a Filipino. It's your job. It's my job. It's your job. It's not a job that I want to do, but it's a job that we have. If if you want to live a better life in the future, if you want to live a better life today, it's a job that we have. <sighs> what a break. Okay, that was a lot. <sighs> to end this episode, I do want to talk about, I do want to talk to the other content creators out there, those who use, who, who use their platform online to create content. Let me just give you, let me just share with you some of my experiences and hopefully you guys can get a tip from tip or two or get some, you know, advice from my experience of this when it comes to dealing with trolls and bashers. So yes, I'm anticipating this episode probably gonna get a more more bashers. If you hey, if you're gonna bash me and you have watched from minute one to here, go ahead, man. Like if you found something wrong with what I said, let me know if you've watched the whole thing. Because arguments are gonna happen. And what I noticed, one, is I guess I guess I want to talk about this because if you are able to pinpoint these stuff, maybe then you can tell your brain, okay, these aren't the comments worth reading and worth engaging and, and worth, you know, using my, my finite time on this earth and effort and my mood and my emotions. Okay, so if you're able to pinpoint some of these stuff, then, then you could probably let yourself rest a little bit and be like, you know what, this is probably, this, 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 these comments are probably not worth it. Okay, here are the patterns I saw. First, with the arguments, um, the moment you talk about something that the bashers are trained or I don't, it doesn't even have to be the, the, the trolls, but people in general. And they, one thing I know is that they like to, to take you away from the topic agad agad. And I know this is whether or not you support Marcos or whether or not you support anybody else. Like I noticed this from people I disagree with in politi- politically and people I agree with. I noticed this with people who who share the same beliefs and want to vote the same people I vote. The moment your side is affected, is is um, challenged, what you do is you find something wrong about the other person. We, let's say you tell me, Anton, ang baho mo. Okay? So, ito lang yung topic, ha? Anton, ang baho mo. Imagine that's the one. Pero excuse me, hindi ang mabaho. Hindi ang mabaho. Um, so, let's say, Anton, ang ha? What's gonna happen here is usually they're gonna say, Eko kaya mabaho. Or, ikaw kaya ang pangit ng ngipin mo. Like, they always, parang, di ma always, sorry. It is a, te- it is a tactic to, to change the topic about the other person. Like, you, you find an argument that's not related to it and bring you away from that. Instead of talking about, talaga, mabaho-baho? Ba't ako mabaho? Are you sure? Baka may something lang sa mustache mo. Ma- ma- like, you, you go away from the topic. So, the moment that you see that, oh, this person's bringing up some other political issue or, or something totally different, not related, that's a sign that uh, this is probably the ones you don't have to engage with. Another one, pag maikli yung sinasabi at pa ugit ugit. Like if you can, there are some patterns and the like these different accounts. They're all kind of saying the same thing. They're all bringing up the same topic. That's also a sign. Related to that is, I don't know. I don't know if this happens to if this this applies to all. But just in my experience of getting bashed, if it's all caps, yo, that's a red flag, man, because. Why would you wanna? Why would someone want to type in all caps? Like, unless you were trying to really prove a point, the band really, really shout it out. Like, 
all caps should be reserved for all caps moments. Pero if it's, bakit yung ano kaya? Gano ba? Or, but mo di pinapansin yung comment ko? In all caps, yo! Parang nababasa ka naman yung words mo whether or not magake or magit yung letters. People always give me shit that my phone has a huge font. So, I read the comments whether I read your, I, re, I can read the words whether or not it's not a caps lock. But the caps lock for me, the caps lock is a red flag. So if you're able to see these patterns, I'd say that that could be a sign to you to be like, you know what, you don't have to worry about these specific comments. Read the other ones, comment to the other ones. Because if you engage, because th- this, this troll farm thing, it's a business. Eh? If you engage with them, you give them more business, you, you help them actually. Like if you, there is an angry comment and you and you, ah, here's my anger, motherfucker. I'm angry at you too, diba? You're not helping anyone. Kasi, leads to my next, my next point. You can't change the mind of someone who doesn't want to change their mind, man. Like, if we talk about, yo, Apple or Samsung, there are, there are benefits if you use Apple, there are benefits if you use Samsung. I was a Samsung user back in the day, back in college. Another thing that people love to give me shit about because I was the only one with the quote-unquote war footage Instagram stories because, yeah, let's be real, the, the Instagram stories of Samsung wasn't good. But the battery was better. Um, transferring files made more sense. What are the other? I like the the, the size. But, but there, there were benefits to the Samsung phone. And people would always tell me, why aren't you using Apple? Why aren't you using Apple? Go use Apple now. It's so much easier. There's AirDrop, the Um what are the other benefits? It looks pretty cool. Ah, oh, yeah. The Apple for me, Apple looks cooler. Um, but in that in that time in my life, I didn't want to hear it. Like, okay, tell me all the good stuff about Apple. But since I want to use Samsung, and this is what I what my parents, you know, I I, I didn't buy it myself. My parents bought it for me back in college. This is what I'm gonna use. Like, I didn't want to change my mind. It was only later on where I was the one who had to be like, you know what? Let's check out this iPhone thing. Quick story. The reason why I tra- I switched from Samsung to Apple was because one time I was in I was in a concert in a Miguel concert. Um, I think it was in the island pool club. I forgot what it's called. Nah. I was able. I saw Inigo Pascual, who was also a who was a who was a mixed VJ that time, and I was about to become a mixed VJ. I saw him. I introduced myself. I was like, Hey, I I joined Mix and again. I watch you. I'm a fan. Blah blah blah. Let's take a picture. We took we took the ugliest selfie ever. Um, that was the moment I'm like, I'm changing. I'm not gonna. I want to meet more celebrities. I want to meet more people, and I want our pictures to be nice, our selfies to be nice, even if it's low light. So that's why I, I. That was like the main thing that made me me want to change to Apple. So in the same in the same way with especially with political stuff, you're not gonna get to change the mind of people who don't want to change their mind. Eh? That's why I said a while ago in the start of my episode that. The people who are just willing to have that conversation. That's who I wanna that's who I wanna talk to, man. If you are set with your ways, I'm not gonna force you to change your I can't force you to change your, you know, political um sides or who, who you vote for or who you support. Because giving facts isn't enough, giving historical data, giving a first hand experience of someone who was detained, but that's not enough for someone to think that Ned was actually I was actually wrong. So yeah. Go go it goes not even just when, when it comes to doing things online. Like in life I see I think like you can't change the mind of someone who doesn't want to change their mind. <sighs> and last but not least, my message to all the online content creators, those using their platforms, is that this is still a responsibility. I've been bash I've been bashing the bashers. I've been I've been, you know, Samana Obko with these people who have you know, said bad things about me, who have um, disrespected me. So, I'm not But at the same time, I, I talked about a lot of those and, and it's more of like them, this is what's wrong with them. It's still our responsibility, despite it being this way, despite the landscape of it being this way in online where you can post something that's true and you can have a good, it could come from a good place, you know, good intention, yet you're still going to get bashed. You're, you're still going to get a lot of shit for that. It is still a responsibility. So that's why I, I do want to, I did want to talk about the martial law. I didn't want to talk about that, but I didn't want to talk about it on my own and do my own research and just talk about what I, what I found. Like, that's why I, I got somebody who experienced it firsthand. Like, that was my response. I wanted to use my platform to talk about those, that issue, that story. 
But in my responsibility as a content creator, I had to get someone who was legitimate and who was reliable and credible. And who else, diba? Than someone who actually experienced it himself. So it's a responsibility. Before you talk about anything, I, w- I wish that it, it, it was something that was enforced strictly better when it comes to like sharing news, sharing opinions that you, you got to make sure when you say something like you, that it's right, it's, uh, that, it, that it's correct. And if it's wrong, admit it and correct it diba? And, and learn from it because it's a responsibility. Eh? And I guess to conclude this, diba? I, I want to share that I, I was disheartened with the, with the, with the, with the feedback on it, with, with the amount of hate I got, with the, with the, the many, many comments I got um, bashing my episode, bashing me personally. There are actually laws that protect this. Um, I'm not going to get, I don't know the specific laws, but there are cyber laws that protect those. And there are regulations for this. Like all, Even if you can theoretically say anything you want to say, post anything you want to say online, there, have been, there are laws that are already in place that keep that in check. So if ever you, you know, cyberbullying, if you try to tarnish somebody's reputation online, for example, there are laws that protect, you know, th- that deal with that. If you do choose to, you know, take it up, if you do choose to use your time and effort to really, you know, deal with that issue and and go after the people who who have wronged you, kumbaga. So yeah, there are laws for that. So I hope that does, even if it disheartens you, it disheartened me. I'm not that scared because I know at least, you know, at least I know there are laws. Like it's not, it's not, what's that movie? Purge. It's not the purge. The parang online, no rules, baby. The only rule is that there are no rules. They gaga me rules pa rin naman. Like there are rules for that. So I hope that doesn't dishearten you too much. And I hope that, um, I hope that if you're a content creator, I hope you go, Go out, create your content. Be responsible with the content that you're creating. Know who you're gonna talk to and talk to them well. Um, do your research and f the haters. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Dinaman, dinaman. Don't let it get to you too much. Don't let it get to you too much. There are always gonna be people who disagree with you. Um, that's not gonna change. The only thing we can deal with, the only thing we can control, is how we deal with that. How we react to the hate that we that we receive. How we react to the people who disagree with us. That's the most that we can do. So that's it, baby. Thanks for listening to this episode. I know um, it's been a little heavy the past episodes, and I'm very, very excited. I don't want to announce it yet. Like I don't want to jinx it. I've already scheduled my next next episode. It's if I talked about martial law, um, and if you did enjoy the politicalness of my of this episode of this episode and the past episode, you're gonna enjoy the next next one. To guess this pretty big time, yeah, I would say, I would say. Uh, so yeah, watch out for that. Uh, again, if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, I hope you do subscribe. If you can, if you haven't followed uh, my Instagram at Anton on One, you can check out the clips there. So yeah, and also my TikTok. If you want to check out the the comments and the clips that I was that I mentioned, it's at Doremi Fausto. All right, so that concludes this episode. Thank you guys for listening, for watching. I'll see you guys again next week. Peace out.